Thank you, Minister Riley. That was a fantastic testimony. How many like to hear testimonies like that? Come on, it ought to encourage you that a relationship with God is just that. It's a relationship. And when we take it seriously, so does he. Come on, he, he does. He wants to be there for you and he wants to take care of his children. But we first have to want to be with him. Do you want to be with him today? Do you want to hear what he has to say today? Yes. All right, well then, if you are ready, I want you to repeat after me. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the way I start my messages off, I've changed it up just a little bit. So you got to listen and then repeat, okay? So I want you to repeat after me and say, I have ears to hear, ears to hear. what the Spirit of the Lord, the of the Lord. is saying to me today. I have eyes to see what the Spirit of the Lord is doing today. Therefore, my mouth will speak what I hear and see from the Spirit of the Lord today. See, we are in a decade of the mouth. How many remember that? If you've been with us for any you know, number of weeks now, then you've been hearing that, that we are in a decade of the mouth, which means we're supposed to speak. But we're only going to speak what we see. So it's important that we not only hear the word, but we see it so we can say it. Amen? And that's what we're going to do today. Now, for those of you who have been with us and, and have, been, have been following closely and have been here during uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, which we celebrated recently, you know that we just went through an eye exam. Okay? Now, it was a spiritual eye exam, but how many have been recognizing that every day you, you got to see what you could see? Okay, for those of you who are online and were not with us for the Feast of Tabernacles, I want to give you just a little, little teeny backdrop on this because it's important for the message today. During the eight days of the Feast of Tabernacles, yes, Tabernacles is eight days that we celebrate and be with God. Over that eight days, Bishop brought us um, what God had showed to him for a, a spiritual eye exam, and it looked like a natural eye chart. Okay, we actually looked at a natural eye chart. If you ever go to get, you know, see if you need glasses. Come on, how many have ever been to the optometrist? You went to see if you need glasses and they give you an eye chart to look at to see how far you can see. And the letters start out big and every line gets a little smaller, right? And depending on what line you can see, whenever, wherever that stops, that's the kind where your vision is. And so the doctor can base your corrective lens on that to help you see better. Now... Um, and as Bishop had studied this out, God gave him words to correlate with each letter, okay? So as he went throughout the entire eight days, he broke it down letter by letter, line by line, so that we would have insight to how well we can see spiritually, all right? I'm rehashing this just for those of you online who were not here, okay? And those in the house who were not here. Now, how many know... On the top of that chart, because I'm sure everybody's probably had their eyes checked at some time or another, is a big letter E, right? Okay, well, that letter E, in a spiritual sense, stands for eternity. God says you have got to see eternity. Can you see it? I want you to understand something. Eternity is not just for those who uh, are saved and going to heaven. There is an eternity called hell as well. It's one side or the other. So we need to see where our eternity is in the long, in the long run, whether we're going to be with God forever or we're going to be burning in a fiery pit called hell forever. Where is our eternity? If we don't even see it, that means we're not even thinking about it, which means we don't even know God. Come on, do we know where our eternity is at? We have to see it. If we can't see that, we won't see anything else on the chart. All right, the next two, I'm just going over a couple and we're going to get to the message, okay? The next two are F and P, faith and praise. How many who heard the message have been practicing? Yes. Have you been practicing praising? Have you been practicing faith, believing God? Not believing for something, but believing him. What did he say? 
Come on. Have you been practicing at all it since you know, we went through all of this? We ought to be. Okay, and then the next line. This is the line we're going to look at today because I've been hearing a lot of things and it seems like we keep coming back to this line. So obviously God's like, as a whole, this is basically where you're at right now, <laughs> needing to see this line. Okay, we need to see. And this line, T-O-Z, is uh, vision 2070. Okay, that doesn't seem like it's very good. However, it actually is pretty good compared to, you know, being spiritually blind, blind which is, you know, the top one. And so anyway, but I want you to think about this for a minute. We had some, as we've been talking about this TOZ, we, we tend to look at it and see it as a whole. And so we've been hearing the, the word TAS, okay? And yet we all know that when you go in to have your eye examined, the doctor does not say, read that line as a whole for me. What is the word spell? No, he says, take the letter, the first one. Okay, T. Good, can you see T? All right, then can you see O? Then can you see Z? All right, T, trust. O, opportunity. Z, for zealous, or which is zealous to repent. All right, so we have to understand that this whole line, does anybody remember what the, the number 70 stood for, it stands for? It's spiritual enlightenment or spiritual order. And God showed me this that I didn't even think about when Bishop brought it out when he was preaching on this. But if we don't see T, we are not going to see O clearly. Thank you. Okay, in order to truly see opportunity clearly as God intended, we have first got to see T clearly. And in order to see Z, zealous to repent clearly, we got to see the other two clearly. And I realize this, I have always been a person who is zealous to repent, okay? I'm quick to repent when things go wrong. But what I saw as God began to open this up to me is that just because I'm zealous to repent, I want you to understand repentance is not being sorry. And repentance is more than that. It's actually changing your behavior. And so the thing is, if we don't see opportunity and we don't see trust clearly, then our change of behavior might not be accurate. We may be changing something we think we need to and God's like you haven't even really repented yet because that wasn't the issue all along the issue was you didn't trust me yet okay so in order to see them all we have to start with one or the you know the fair first one so today that's what we're going to do we are going to focus on T for trust now when I asked why you might be thinking well I thought I trusted God I think I trust him. I trust him in my everyday life. How do you know we don't see trust yet, Elder Christie? Well, because when I ask God what we're focusing on today, <laughs> what he wants to say to you today, he immediately, there was no hesitation. And I, I, it wasn't like I knew, I wasn't thinking about the eye chart as far as like, this is a letter I think we should do. No, I was just like, God, what do you want to say? And he said, Isaiah 26, 4. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For the Lord Yehovah is everlasting strength. God has been speaking to us on and off for a long time now about trusting him. And yet he knows that our vision needs a little correcting because we're not seeing quite right. The most dangerous thing is to think we see something that we really don't or to think we know something that we really don't. And the reason why it's dangerous is because if we think we know it, if we think we have it, we stop looking for it. We stop pursuing the Lord to see. And we ju it just stops and then we really don't even have it. We don't see it, okay? So we have to see trust. We need to see it today. Now for those of you who were not with us, when I say see, I'm talking about that light bulb that goes off. You know, that aha moment. We got to see what it means to trust God as like, you know, when you read the scriptures and you might have read the same verse a thousand times, but one day you read that verse and go, oh, that's what that means. Now I can actually use it in my life. I can apply it. It becomes something, it becomes life in me. It becomes alive. It's not just some more words on the page. It's real. That is what we have to see with every word on the eye chart. But today we're talking about trust. God says you got to see it. I want you to have an aha moment today about trusting God. 
Okay, that's what he wants. Now, the word trust from Isaiah 26, 4 here, it means to hasten to refuge. I want you to think about that just a minute. If we really trust God, we're going to go fast to him as our protector, as our refuge, as our place of safety. It's, a, it's an immediate thing. When trouble comes, when, when, uh, you know, when we feel like there's pressure coming or danger or whatever, who do we, we turn to? We turn immediately to him quickly. He is our refuge. That's when we trust God in that. It means to be confident or sure. It also means to be bold. Now, bold here, the, you know, when, when you say I'm bold and you're talking about trust, it's because you're bold because of being confident, secure, and sure in who he is. How confident and secure and sure are we in knowing our God? Do we really know him that we are so confident in him? Come on, this is going to be a day we're going to think. Now, I want, you to, I want you to get a picture for just a moment. The way I saw this message today, it, it wasn't like I get up here and I'm going to preach at you. It's kind of like God's like, come on in and sit down. I'm going to talk to you today. Let's clear some things up. I just want you to see a little better. So I'm going to clear some things up for you. So that means throughout this message, I'm going to ask some questions that, you know, God wants you to think about. Because when we have a conversation with somebody, it goes back and forth, doesn't it? And so he wants you to think about some things so you can answer. So Isaiah says to trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. That Lord here is Yehovah. Trust the Lord, Yehovah, and for the Lord, Yehovah is everlasting. That verse says Yehovah twice. God says, I want you to trust me, the self-existent, most supreme God there is. I don't want you to look at the man-made gods who have no breath in them and put any kind of trust whatsoever in them. I want you to trust me, the one who created you, the one who knows every hair on your head, the one who knew you from your mother's womb and formed you and put gifts and callings of purpose on the inside of you, the one who knows every cell in your body. I want you to trust me. I, I, trust me. Those other gods, they can't even breathe. They can't do anything. Trust me. And he says, trust me forever. Forever is forever. It, 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 I want you to trust me forever. You're never going to stop needing to trust me. You're never going to stop. You're never going to get to a place in your walk with me where you don't have to trust me anymore. You will always have to trust me. So the thing is about trust is we don't trust people we don't know. How many, you're not going to just trust a stranger. Come on, is anybody hearing me today? Would you just automatically trust a stranger with your life? Probably not. So if you don't know God, if you only know about him, do you think you're going to really trust him? No. In order to trust him, we have to know him. And what I saw in this, because our trust is forever, trust is progressive. We, we, it becomes a progressive thing in the areas and the ways we trust him. Okay? So how many know that it's easy to think you trust the Lord when things are going great in life? Come on, the money's flowing. People are talking good about you. People like you. Everybody's kind of working together. There's unity. Uh, you know, whatever. It's easy to think you're trusting God in that moment. And yet, what happens when the floor falls out from underneath of you and somebody that's close to you dies or you lose a job or your friends start talking behind your back or people spitefully use you or, you know, come on, whatever. What happens in those moments? Do you still choose to trust God? Do you still immediately look and say, God, I trust you to see me through all of it? I can't do this on my own. I need you. Or in those moments, do you turn to something else or someone else immediately? Come on. We have to know this. I'm, God is asking you, what do you do? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? I need you to know what you do in those moments. 
See, God knows, but he needs us to know. He wants us to take a look today and say, you know, what do you do? Well, maybe you're one of those people that when, when <laughs> all hell breaks loose, you drop to your knees and start crying out to God. Maybe, maybe it's in the bad things that you seek him. Okay? Because there are some people that that's what happens. But when all's going good, when everything is all well with your soul, you think, that's when you forget about him and start trusting yourself and the things around you. Come on, we have to know, where's our trust in God? I want you to take a moment and think in your life, the things that have happened and what your response was at that time. That'll help you to know where your trust really lies. Okay? So, in all of this, we have to pay attention to how we respond to God. You know, and one of the things that I realized is, life today is super busy. Come on, how many understand that it's just busy? And there are so many distractions. There, I mean, you, all you have to do is wake up in the morning <laughs> and you're bombarded with so many things. And God knows that. And so he's like, I've been talking to you about trusting me and this relationship with me for a while. But see, you've been so busy, you haven't really heard me and you haven't done anything about it. Life has gotten in the way of our relationship with him. And so we haven't seen trust clearly. And he's like, I want to fix that. I want you to see better. I want you to know what you really see. And the thing is, I know in order for you to stop long enough to pay attention, I might have to challenge you a little bit. Come on, how many parents know that sometimes you got to sit your kids down and just talk to them because you see some things aren't, that aren't going well. Let's talk about it. Come on. And that's what God's saying. I want to talk about it because I know that when we get together and we, get a, we build our relationship, you will start seeing trust clearer. Amen? Now, you know, we can, we can keep on uh, going on with this and, and where we are with when, the, when the good, the bad, the ugly comes to in our lives. But remember what I said, that trust is a progressive thing. So we have to know what, we, what happens in this part of our life. Do we trust God when things are good, when things are bad, whatever. But then there's a progressive state. Maybe you said, yeah, you know what? I realize I have been trusting God in these areas. Well, then we, ha we, can, we ought to have moved to the next place, which is we trust him enough to do what he says. Right. Have we gotten there? Have we gotten to the place that we trust him enough to do what he says? So... Isaiah 26 and 8. Now, this is out of the uh, New Living Translation. It says, Lord, we show our trust in you by obeying your laws. Our heart's desire is to glorify your name. Uh, right here, you know, Isaiah is like, when we obey what you say, that's literally showing you our trust. How many know the scripture that talks about, you know, we, sh we love God by keeping his commandments? Okay, when you, when you keep my commandments, that, that you're loving me, right? We know that one. Do we know this one? That when we obey him, we're actually showing him we trust him. Psalm 143, 8 says, In the morning let me hear of your mercy, for in you I trust. Let me hear what you're saying. Show me the path I should walk, for I entrust my life to you. I trust you so much, I want to see where you want me to go, and I'm going to go it. I'm going to go that way. Proverbs 30 and 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. So have we progressed in our trust in God that every day we're looking for his instruction so we can do it? That every day we're reading his word, we're seeing what he's saying, we're learning about the things we don't know yet because we trust him to the point that we want to make sure we're obeying him. We're doing all his instructions. When he gives you an instruction for your life, do you take it into consideration and say, um, you know, maybe I'll do that, but I don't know, I don't really feel like it. Or you, do you say, yes, God, I trust you, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to question Amen. what you're saying, I'm just going to do it. Do we really see it? Can we see this T, this trust on the eye chart? Do we understand that God, his word is full of instruction because he knows the best path for us to walk. And if we'll walk in it, then our life will be exactly what he has ordained it to be from the beginning. 
Can we see that yet? Or maybe it's still a little blurry and we need to see. Now, the biggest thing that God really wants to talk to us today is this word called bold. Trust that is bold. Remember I said that this bold is because of being confident, secure, and sure in the Lord, which we will not be if we do not have a relationship with him. And I'm not talking about a superficial relationship. I'm not even talking about a somewhat good relationship. I am talking about an intimate, deep relationship with him. All of us, God, was, as he was correcting my vision, was showing me we all are lacking in this area of trust. Our vision's still blurry, and he wants to correct it. You see, as we get to know him, as we get to trust him in all of these things, we get, we get to uh, a deeper relationship. He begins to clear up that whole trust thing. And in that, we begin to see, and I want you to begin to like, take the, the lenses that are getting focused in right now. Because see, this bold kind of trust, God says, this bold kind of trust, you have to see if you truly want to be my witness and evangelize. You won't ever do it unless you can see clearly. Not do it correctly anyway. Not do it God's way. Okay? So it is one of those things that all of us think we, we can see, but we really can't see. Do you understand that without trusting God in evangelism, it does not matter how many opportunities come our way, we will not take full advantage of them? All of you, it feels really quiet in here. Okay, and that's okay. I, I'm not getting on you about it. It's okay, we, we're, we're adjusting, we're thinking, right? See, we've been talking a lot about opportunity, and it's so easy to think, oh, I see opportunity, I see opportunity, I see opportunity. Great, what did you do with it? See, opportunity, we might see the opportunity there, but not really see it because we don't see trust yet. So we haven't taken advantage of that opportunity to do what God has said. Do you understand that? If we come to a complete stranger and we want to talk to them about God and we don't trust him, then in that moment we're going to do one of two things. We're going to freeze and not say anything and walk away. And, or we're going to start babbling stuff that doesn't even make sense maybe. Come on. Or we're going to try to rehearse something from our head that we think we know but we really don't know because we haven't seen it yet. How many times that we have stood before somebody, I, I want you to be honest because I'm being honest with you right now. How many times do um, things happen and they get in the way? I, I got to read this because it's so good. I need to read you the scripture. We're going to stop. I'm going to come back. For, we'll come back in just a moment. Proverbs 25, 29 and 25. Now this is the message. The fear of human opinion disables. Trusting in God protects you from that. Now, I want you to hear this because when it comes to trusting God to be bold and able to, to be able to evangelize, how many know that if you can't see clearly, as soon as you stand in front of the stranger, then all of a sudden, you know, I, I, this has happened to me. I get a million thoughts that come. Like the thought that what if this, what if that, what if, oh, they might say this or my, they might not, or maybe they don't believe this. And your mind goes around in circles and before long the moment's gone. Why? Because that fear of what they think or what they'll say or what they won't receive has disabled that moment for you to be able to talk. Okay? But see, trusting God causes that not to happen. Literally it says, what does it say? Trusting in God protects you from that. Okay. Yeah. It keeps you from getting disabled in those moments when you're standing before somebody. You know you need to say something. Okay? But if we don't trust God in the place of bold, that where you're totally 100% confident, what? That he is with you in that moment. That he's not leaving you. He's not forsaking you. He wants you to evangelize. He wants you to witness. Oh, we have to trust that he really has said, yep, you too. When I said, do the work of an evangelist. When I said, be my witnesses. When I said, be fishers of men. Yeah, I was talking about you and you. Oh, yeah, and you and you. 
that we have to trust and know that he wasn't saying, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm crossing you off because you don't talk very well. No, he, tend to, he likes to use those kind of people. <coughs> How many feel like you don't talk very well to other people? Okay. I'm a preacher and I don't. God says, you're the kind of people I want to use because then it's not about your words. It's about my words. Do you hear today? But that if without trusting him, this bold trust, this bold kind of trust, I want you to get that phrase in you, that bold kind of trust, that kind of trust that's, that knows God's heart so well, that you have a relationship with him that is beyond surface. It is beyond coming to church twice a week. It is beyond keeping the feast. It is beyond reading your Bible. It is beyond praying. It is to a place of intimacy that you can't even really share with somebody else in the, the depth of it. But you, and the older, only way to do that is to spend time with him. The only way to get to that place is to make a relationship with him a priority. The only way to truly get to that place is to decide that you really want to go there with him. Yeah. Do you really want to go all the way, as it were, with God? Do you, do you really want to make your life be all about him? Mm -hmm. See, we're not going to get to this bold kind of trust unless we do. Because this bold kind of trust is so secure. Come on, how many know that when you are absolutely confident, secure, sure about something, you don't have a problem telling anybody else about it? Come on, you, it doesn't even matter if they question you about it. You don't waver. You don't doubt because you know that you know. God says, I want you to know that you know me. That's how you're going to have a bold kind of trust. When you know that you know me, you know that you know what I said, you know that you know that you understand what I said, you can see it. It's not just having a bunch of knowledge. Come on, a lot of knowledge is really just surface relationship. It's, it's not a deeper relationship. I have all kinds of knowledge, but it doesn't win anybody. It never has. I've tried lots of times. It doesn't work at all. In fact, most of the time, it probably just makes me look a little foolish. And it sure doesn't make God look good. Because see, when God is saying something, when he talks, when he has something to say into someone's life, there's a little shaking that goes on. When God is saying something, there's an impact that's made. Come on, how many times have you stood before somebody and you tried to talk, but you didn't have the bold kind of trust in God? And so when you were talking, you kind of fumbled around a little bit, or you were worried that you, it sounded too harsh, what you were hearing sounded too harsh, so you changed it a little bit to make it not sound so, quite so hard, and it had no impact whatsoever. Why? Because then it, we turned it into something God didn't say. We compromised his word in that moment to make somebody's feelings feel better. God wants to know you and you know him so that you can have a bold kind of trust that will truly transcend when you're out talking to people that in that moment, all the other thoughts that would try to come pushes aside and you're able to move right in to that place and say what needs to be said. Do what needs to be done. But see, we have to see first. We got to see this kind of trust. We got to recognize that we're not there, that we haven't had it. Come on, if we were there, if all of us could see this way, this place would look a little different right now. Uh -oh. We all know that yeah. in our head. Mm -hmm. Okay, we all know that in our head. But today God says, I want to correct your vision. I want you to understand this bold kind of trust is the only way you're going to evangelize effectively. The only way you're truly going to help somebody is if you know me in that way. Because that goes beyond knowledge. That's where life, that rivers of living water, can only come from that deep place where God is. That's where we can pour out. Now, uh, you know, Reverend Connie made this mention earlier in the back room, you know, we are to trust no man. I, I was thinking about this. I'm like, God, you know, why do we have such a hard time trusting you in this kind of way? Like beyond anything where we totally, completely trust him, that bold kind of trust. Well, because oftentimes, how many people have been let down by somebody? 
Come on, maybe, a, maybe one or both of your parents have let you down. Maybe a friend, a coworker, even someone in the ministry. Perhaps somebody has let you down. Ah, guess what? We've all been let down. And another thing, we've all let somebody else down. Because we're human. We fail. But what did Apostle Paul say? He says, follow me as I follow Christ. I don't want you to trust me. I want you to follow me as I follow Christ because you're not really following me. You're following the God in me. Okay? And that's what we're to do. This isn't about trusting man. But how, when we, what happens is we oftentimes, because people let us down, a lot of times we take the image of whoever let us down the worst and we compare it to God. And in that, we think of God in the same aspect. And so we're like, well, I can't trust them, so why would I be able to trust somebody I can't see? God's like, I'm not human. I'm God. I'm not going to fail you. I love you. I want to be with you. I created you. I know everything about you. And I don't change. The people around you, they change all the time. I don't. I don't change. Get to know me so you can find that out. Because when you find out that I'm not going to change, when you find out what I'm really like, then you're going to learn to trust me. And when you learn to trust me, you're not going to have a problem with doing what I say. You're not going to have a problem with telling somebody else about me. Do you hear today? Can you hear God's heart for you today? His love for you today. His desire to correct that vision about trust. Because he knows that when we all can see that with a bold kind of trust, we all see him that way, know him in that kind of way, then, oh man, watch out, city of Sandusky. Watch out, city, wherever you work. Watch out, state of Michigan. Watch out, world. Why? Because God's coming to your town. So what is God asking from us today? He's asking for him, for us to get to know him. He's like, I've been asking you for a long time, but I, I want you to hear me today. Make me a priority so that you can come to a place of the bold kind of trust. So I encourage everyone today. How many wants and desires a bold kind of trust? Yeah. Come on, maybe you desire just the first kind of trust. You want to, you got to progress to that way, right? But that's okay. We got we to gotta see trusting him at all in, in order to progress through, you know, to another, another place in trusting, trusting him. But he wants that for you today. He desires for that to you today. So I encourage all of you to get proactive in your relationship with God and deepening your relationship with God. Get proactive in getting to know him. Get proactive in seeking him and trusting him. Get proactive in it. Don't be passive and just say, yes, God, I, I, I trust you. I love you. Show him. Let's show God that we really do love him. Let's show him that we trust him. And if you're like, I'm not sure that I trust him yet, then get proactive in getting to know him. How are you going to do that? Well, you got to talk to him first. You don't ever get to know anybody unless you talk to them. Come on, if you, don't, if you don't every day talk to your spouse, you will be two strangers living in a house. If we don't every day talk to God, how are we going to get to know him better? We won't. So if we're proactive about this, then we're going to talk to him and we're going to listen. We're going to be in his word to find out what he says because we can't do what he says unless we know what he says. And we're going to make sure that we're coming to the places where we can hear what he's saying through other people like this place is an excellent place to hear what God is saying. Amen. Come on. That's right. Are you ready this week to go out of here and get proactive in your relationship with God? Are you ready this week to pursue that bold kind of trust? Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for your word today.
We are so grateful that you love us enough to show us and correct our vision today. God, you want us to be able to see the, all of the letters on the eye chart, but you know we're, we won't progress unless we first see this. We have to see trusting you, God. We have to see with clear vision. So thank you for showing us today. Thank you for opening, correcting that vision and bringing it into focus something we have not seen before. I pray today, God, that as every person uh, just ch checks themselves and looks to see where they're at, that they're honest with themselves. To truly say, this is where I trust God or this is where I don't. Or maybe I'm still back at eternity and I got to figure that out first. I got I to gotta find out, God. I got to know you first. But today I thank you, Father, that as every person sees where they're at, they in all of it recognize your love for them and make a choice today to move forward in knowing you. We give you praise. We honor your name. I thank you for every person online that's watching right now. May every one of them know your heart today is for them. That you love them so much and want to get to know them even more. We give you praise. Amen. Minstrel.
stop 